Hello, Curran here. This video is going to be a quick demo of VizHub Beta. If you go to vizhub.com, this is what you'll see, and you can click sign up or sign in, and you can sign in with GitHub. After you've signed in, you can click on this menu here and then click on create visualization. You can create a visualization by forking one of these starter templates, and there's just one right now. So I'm going to click on that, Hello World. And this is what we've got. This is the Hello World example. So let me run through everything that's going on here. Here we're editing index.html. And in fact, the title that you put here is parsed and used as the title for the page. We're loading a styles.css file, which is defined here. And you can go to this file and edit it and say, change the background color to red or whatever. As you type, things update and also things are saved automatically after about five seconds of not typing. Next, we're loading the D3 library, which we're going to use in our JavaScript code. Here we define a div with an ID of message. And then here we load bundle.js, which is a generated file. See, you can see it here. And this is generated from our index.js by rollup every time we change the code. So let's take a look at index.js. You can import API functions uh, like this from D3 using ES6 syntax. So here we're importing select. And you can also import local modules from dot slash um, some file name. So here we're importing message from message.js. Let's take a look at message.js. This is an ES6 module that's exporting a single uh, thing called message, and it's just a string. Hello world. So again, I could change this to like a message, hello message, and see it updates on the right and then saves. I'll change it back. After importing select and message, our index.js uses D3 to set the text of this div with an ID of message to be whatever the string is in message. Finally, you can add a description using markdown in this readme.md file. So if this changes, this description here which is the rendered markdown, changes. If you wanted to delete a file, you can just select it and then press the delete key. And then if you say OK, it'll be removed from this list. If you want to rename a file, you can double click it and give it a new name like, I don't know, my message. Now that we've changed it, we should update index.js to use that file, my message. And let's check, does it work? Hello, yeah, it's working, great. If you want to add a new file, you can click on new file right here and give it a new name. And then you've got this file, but I don't want that. So I'll just delete that. You can create your own new visualization by forking an existing one by clicking this fork button right here. So I clicked it and now see, this ID has changed up here. And I could change the title to say, Hello World 2.0. The title updates there. And then if I want to see my list of stuff, I can click on my name here. And it's admittedly very basic, but it shows you the list of the things that you've got. Another new feature in the beta is uploading data sets. You can click Upload Data Set choose a CSV file. So I'll choose iris.csv. And it shows you the name here. So you can say you can change this and say like data set, iris data set. And it will give you a permalink, which is a permanent link that you can use in the future to download this data set. I'll just change it back to iris. When you're uploading a data set, uh, the platform asks you for a source name and a source URL so that we can keep track of where these data sets come from. This particular data set happens to come from the UCI machine learning repository. 
So I'm going to type that here, UCI Machine Learning Repository. And for the source URL, I'm going to copy paste this page, which is where the data set came from, uh, paste that here. Now we've got everything we need. We can click on Upload to upload this data set. Now this data set has its own page. And there's a preview of the CSV data here, the title, where it's from, which links to this page here, and also a download link. So what we can do is copy this link address. See, this is what it looks like. And when you load this, it will download that CSV data. Now, what we could do with that download link that I still have copied, I can go into one of my uh, Hello World examples, Hello World 2.0, and we can load that CSV data. So what I'm going to do is import CSV from D3, and then we can say CSV, and then I can paste that URL. That CSV function returns a promise, so I can say CSV dot then some callback function that takes as input the data. And then here we could say console.log data. And if we open up the dev tools, we can say that in fact it got printed out. So this is how you can load CSV data for creating data visualizations. So that's a tour of the features that are there now in VizHub. And if you like what you see, please get involved. And here are some things you could do to get involved. If you experience a moment of frustration, there's this link here, frustrated, comment here. And if you click on that, it, you land in this uh, GitHub issue where it's just a general feedback thread where you know I want to collect uh, any kind of raw experiences that we could transform into issues later on. But if you've got a feature request or you know bug report and you're familiar with enough with GitHub issues, you can create uh, an upvotable user story. So as a like visualization author, I want to do something so that something can happen. And this is the format that we use for our user stories. This GitHub icon has been added here, which links to the open source part of this project. This project contains the user interface code for the editor, and it also has a public backlog, which is the user stories organized by the number of thumbs up that they have. See, the Getting Started tutorial has seven thumbs up. Visualization Templates has three thumbs up. Uh, so what you can do to help us out is, uh, you know, go through these issues and give a thumbs up to the ones that you think are worth doing or worth doing soon or, you know, frustrating for you. This will help us prioritize the work. Also new with the beta release is we're tracking our Scrum board publicly so everyone can see what's you know, being worked on now and what the prioritized backlog looks like. So if you want to get involved, come in here, poke around, maybe leave a comment on one of these. I think I'll actually clean this up a little bit and make this another template that you can start from, uh, which shows how to load a CSV file. So we don't need message anymore. I think I'll get rid of some of these comments. We don't need my message. I'm going to delete that. The title should be uh, Loading CSV. We don't need all these comments anymore. And I don't think we even need any CSS. So I'm going to delete styles.css too. We can slim down everything here. And I think I'll modify the code to actually show the CSV data in here. So after we get the data, we can use D3 to say select the body and then append 
a pre element, which is pre-formatted text. It looks like code. And then set the text content of that pre element to be the data. But uh, <laughs> that doesn't actually work too well. See, we get object, object, object. What this should be is um, the stringified JSON. So we can say JSON.stringify the data. And we can actually cause this to indent properly by passing null as a second argument and then two as the third argument. And see, that's what we get. JSON representation of the data. And lastly, I think I'll update the description to um, you know, link to that data set and say, this example shows how to load a CSV data set, the iris data set. And that syntax there is markdown for links. And then I'll paste that URL, vishub.com slash current slash data slash slash iris. And then if I click on that, it should open this page. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's it. That's a demo of VizHub Beta. Hope you enjoyed.